Yeah, you thought I looked somewhere between like Moses and Santa Claus. I think I heard someone say sexy Santa. That was <laughs> <laughs> okay, yeah, so that's what it was. Listen, if Santa looks like him, I'm waiting every Christmas Eve with cookies right. and milk hanging <laughs> out by the chimney. <laughs> I know hey, Josh. How are you? How are you? Are you in I'm Dallas? Really, you're close. I grew up there. I'm in Scottsdale. Oh, that's right. That's right. Scottsdale. This, uh, I have to start with uh, this series. First of all, I feel like Sheldon the Utopian could actually use a little Josh Dumel because I, you've never really taken yourself too seriously. You've got such a great sense of humor. I feel like he could use one. Yeah, he takes, he takes his job very seriously, doesn't he? He's, a, he's an old school... Uh, patriarchal character who, who, who lives very strictly by this code, yep. uh, but is learning that, you know, uh, you, you, you change with the times, you get passed by. And I think that that's one of the things that he's, he's kind of learning is that, you know, even though his intentions have always been good and he, you know, he, he's always there for the, for, the, for the greater good and to affect real change. But, you know, sometimes people don't agree and he's going to, he has to listen to that now. Yeah. It's also part of parenting. Do you have a code that you live by? Uh, yes. Uh, I tell my son, don't go to jail. Okay. Don't get yourself killed and don't kill anybody. That's it. Those are kind of, I hate to say, those are kind of the rules in Mexico too when you go down there. It's pretty, <laughs> it's pretty laid back and pretty easy, pretty, you know, common sense. I, if um, you can do that, I'll be okay. Well, I, I have to get back to your son. Does he realize that he actually had a say in what happened with your costume? I love that story. Yeah, he does. He, he loves it. I mean, listen, Liz Wolf did an amazing, these, these guys did an amazing job on these things, but it's funny that, you know, all the, all the, the powwows and all the meetings and all the details that go into the thought of making these costumes, a five-year-old's like, it's too white. It's too white. <laughs> So, and, and the fact that Liz actually took that note, I was like, you know what? I think he's got a good point. And they went back and they sort of added a little bit of gray to break up the white. And, and so he's very proud of that. Um, you know, he, he thinks he should get a, a creative consultant credit for it. <laughs> right. I'll bet it's going to help in the future for sure. So he was okay with the hair, the, the, the big mane that you have. It was, yeah. the, it was the whiteness of the costume. Okay. Yeah, he thought I looked somewhere between like Moses and Santa Claus. <laughs> What what have you do you see in him already? It's a, this this whole series is about parenting and legacy and what you leave your kids. What what do you see in him already of you? Well, you know, he's a very friendly little dude. He really is. He's a he's he's a he's he's a kid that goes to school and sort of includes everybody and he's he always has a he always has good energy about him. I actually learn more from him than he probably learns from me, to be honest. It's, it's, it's really fascinating to see how these kids and, and this, this innocence that they have is, is there's a lot to learn from that, you know, and we get become jaded. We come we put these walls up, but these kids, they're, they're so they're like these open vessels. And, and if we, if we pay attention, there's a lot that we can learn from. And I actually learn from that and try to sort of emulate that. But, but at the same time, I think that for me, setting a good example for him is, is also the, of the utmost importance. Well, he gets to see you do what you love, which to me is one of the best examples you can set. Um, okay, I have to ask you quickly about Arizona. You've been here many times to golf, and I know you've called golf meditative, but I know that the Waste Management Phoenix Open, it gets very raucous. Your fondest memory of uh, playing in that thing, the Pro-Am, a couple times. I wouldn't call the, the, the Waste Management Open meditative. <laughs> that, that's what, It's raucous. That's but what I, I mean. Will, but I will <laughs> say this. I want to see more of that in golf. Yep. That is where I think, you know, golf would really prosper is if, you know, let, let, let loose, let them have fun, you know, let the golfers like, like get involved in that kind of stuff. And, and I was supposed to go play in that tournament this last year, but I couldn't cause I was working, right. but you know, that is one of the most fun tournaments you can play in. Yeah. Well, we hope to see you back for sure. Speaking of working, how was the DR? I feel like all of us were stuck in our homes. You're out hanging with J-Lo in the DR, probably golfing. It was rough. It was rough, yeah. <laughs> I got to tell you. Being in paradise with, you know, 
Lenny Kravitz and Cheech mm-hmm. Marin and Jennifer Coolidge and JLo. It was, it was a rough, rough job. Yeah, I don't feel bad at all. Um, quick rapid fire because you're on the cover. I don't know how much time we have. I'm looking at my chat. So just yes, keep me posted if I have a minute or two, but quick rapid fire. It's the men's issue. Manliest thing in your garage is what? My 69 Camaro. That's pretty manly. Manliest thing in your man cave or is the garage your man cave? A tractor, which is at my cabin in Minnesota. Favorite man food. What's a guy's meal for you? Meatballs, mashed potatoes, and gravy. That's my mom's. <laughs> that's, my, that's what my mom makes me every time she comes to visit. And okay, she makes I, enough to put in the freezer, by the way, so I can have it when she's not here. See, women always think ahead. I love you that. Know, I, I know it's okay to cry. And as a man, I think we've all learned that sometimes showing emotion is sometimes the manliest thing you can do. When was the last time you sobbed like a baby watching a movie? Ever seen The Last Dinosaur? I have. I sobbed more than once at that, actually. Oh, my God. Twice I cried in that movie. Yeah. When Spot finds his little human family. Don't and do leaves, it. And leaves Milo. Don't, you, don't and do it, Justin. Milo finally Mills. makes it home after his long adventure away and goes back to, and, and gets to put his little stamp up on the wall. That movie, telling you, and I'm not <laughs> afraid to admit it, it's an animated Disney Pixar movie, yep. and, it, and I lost it twice in that one. Yeah, you and me both. They get you every time. What are you doing for Father's Day? I have no idea. When is Father's Day? Sometime in June. Oh, hi, Tara. How are you? I'm doing great. Uh, congratulations on this. And, and I think, Ben, I'm going to start with you. In, in describing your character, it's funny. We get these press notes, and it says, um, he's a man of vast intellect and cunning. How much like your character are you? <laughs> Maybe not much. <laughs> <laughs> You gotta have a little in common with them. Yeah, yeah. You know, you kind of like work with what you've got and then you sort of <laughs> <put it away. laughs> I read that you actually got this part while you were in the middle of a field finishing up the crown. Is that true? It is, yes. I got a call from my agent saying you've been offered this another Netflix show, um, uh, which was thrilling, called Jupiter's Legacy. And I'm sending over two scripts, but I I only had a tiny bit of reception on my phone. But my Kindle had a full 3G connection. So I bought the comics and I sat and read them for the rest of the day. So the comics were my introduction to the world and the character before I even opened the page of a script. Matt, where were you when you got the call? Oh, man, I... uh... Well, I had sent a tape in to Stephen tonight um, and very quickly actually got the call that I think he wanted to meet with me. I, I think it was the next day. So I went down to his office and he sort of laid out the whole uh, the whole season for me and, and who George was. And it, it felt like he was pitching me the show. And I was like, what's happening here? I'm trying to get the job from you. Uh, so uh, it, it, it was a very it was a it was the most like optimistic meeting I think I've ever had because he was essentially saying like, is this something you would want to do? And I'm like, yeah, I sent my tape into you, man. Uh, but I, I got the, I, I think I, I got the call. Uh, I might've been driving home from that meeting. I, I think by that time they had sort of had their mind made up already just off the tape. And I think he just wanted to meet me to make sure I wasn't an insane person. So uh, I guess I passed. Well, <laughs> you actually have one of my favorite scenes. I, I'm only about halfway through the series. I'll be honest with you, and I can't wait to finish it. But you've got um, Matt, one of my favorite scenes when your character, you know, he's you've described him, described him before as kind of like a Bruce Wayne um, yeah. of this series. He's got everything. Yeah. And the scene with the 80 plus eggs at varying degrees of <laughs> I, thought, I have I have not seen that. So can you both answer and Matt, I'll start with you. What is the biggest George like thing you own? Like the biggest baller thing in your house? Oh, the biggest baller thing in my house. Uh, I do have a theater room with a huge screen that rolls down with two TVs on either side of that for sports. But then I, I just recently put up an 85 inch TV behind the screen <laughs> so, that I could, so that I could watch sports in high def, like bright clarity. And then I watch my movies on the big screen. So that's, I suppose that's kind of baller. Hopefully you're a Cardinals, a Suns, or maybe a Diamondbacks fan. I'm not. I'm not. I'm a Braves fan and a Falcons fan and a Georgia fan. Whatever. Whatever. 
<laughs> Brianna, how about you? You look like you're actually, it looks like you're living in someone's basement right now, but what's the biggest oh, I, mean, I'm actually, I live in this fantastic uh, 17th century house in the country and, and mine is my, is my home cinema as well. Um, which I've sort of been lovingly uh, uh, installing so, over this kind of lockdown period. And it has the most incredible Atmos sound system, a huge, huge yeah. screen. Um, I get, you know, we just love it. We're in there all the time watching movies. Yeah. So yeah, it's, we are the home movie superheroes. <laughs> you, had me at, you had me at English countryside. Where are you exactly? I've been fortunate enough to have been. I miss it so much. I'm in East Sussex, where it's, oh. we're quite near the coast, about 12 miles from the coast, but it's this just gorgeous, gorgeous old house. And I've kind of sequestered this room upstairs as, as mine. So I kind of like, can't, this is my line learning of research room. <laughs> Those are well, some research books back there. <laughs> not, not to name drop, Jamie Dornan had like a ficus plant behind him in his lame Zoom room. So I'll, I'll trust you that your house is incredible, but I'm not super impressed by your attic or whatever. That there. <laughs> it's a work in progress, Tara. Okay. Work in progress. I, I know they just wrapped me, but quickly, a code you live by. This is all about about a code, you know, Josh's character lives by a certain code. Matt, what's your code and Ben, same. Oh man, I don't have a code. I just, I try to do the best I can every day. That's my code. Uh, I try to be as open as I possibly can be. Uh, sometimes it doesn't work, but that's what I aim for. <laughs> Congratulations on this. Um, I don't even know where to start, but I have to start with the costumes. And, and Elena, I'll just start with you. Whose costume, when you saw it for the first time, were you most envious of? Oh my goodness. Well, first of all, I do like your shirt, your costume today, Tara. Um, rocking the blue, <laughs> very nice. Um, yeah, it is a very color, lovely shade of blue. It <laughs> Thank is. you. The color schemes in the show were very much, you know, important to the character and like, for instance, we got a comic book here, right? Chloe's Co color scheme is pink. So I love the nod to that. As far as like getting jealous, I have to be honest with you. I'm, I'm gonna be real. Uh, I I wasn't like it was a beautiful sight to behold, but I was like, okay, it, it, they're sweaty suits. They weren't really easy to go to the bathroom in. I'm as a character of the Edna Mode Edna Mode perspective, no capes. Chloe's not about that life. It would have felt wrong to have been wearing one, but I did right. like I love also I did love staring at Tanika uh, who plays um the Flare Two, uh, my sister. Yeah. Uh, well, not sister, thing, but we're. Uh, never mind. With Alan <laughs> Louise, I could go mm. on, um, but I love staring at that costume in particular because it looked very much like scales, like like iridescent, like a kaleidoscope. It was just yeah. these were works of art. I don't know so much as me wanting to wear one as much as just stare at it and admire. <laughs> well, Andrew, let me go to you because you have, I think, a little more spandex than Ian does. Raise your <laughs> hand if you hate spandex. I mean, come on, it's awful. <laughs> I love spandex, Tara. Stop. It. I, I got, I got, I got to really love that suit. And and, you know the the tightness and the the inability to go to the bathroom without taking everything off. No, um, the suit the suits are absolutely incredible. Uh, Liz Wolf, our costume di director designer, sorry, uh, did such a fantastic job. Um, as we've said before, you know, wearing one of the suits just helps to imbue such a sense of character. When when you put it on immediately, you feel like the sense of power and authority, and and it just really helps to to seamlessly kind of move into that that superhero world without feeling, you know, at all out of place. Even though we're we're you know doing all of these crazy stunts and explosions and flying like it all feels real when you're in the costume so <laughs> i don't care what you say 100 bucks says you'll never put on spandex unless you're doing it for a movie or tv show <laughs> Oh, I don't know. My my wardrobe would beg to differ, but that's okay. for another time. I mean, you didn't see him at the you didn't see him in us at the gym. I mean, it was jazzercise wear all day, every day. <laughs> I love I love a I love a, a short short. What can I say? He does a he does a really good John Travolta. Just <laughs> well, Ian, I have to tell you, out of everybody in the series, if you put that on in the gym with the hair you've got going on in this series, I'm all about it. By the way, you to me take the cake with the best Instagram handle. All I do is Quinn. <laughs> kind of, thank kind you. of love the DJ Khaled reference in that. <laughs> Big fan. Thank you very much. Yeah. But but tell me a little bit about Hutch because you're you're a little bit harder to figure out, and and mm -hmm. and you're fortunate that you don't have to deal with a very moody teenage sister and a, a brother. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I, that's what I love about Hutch. It's like people say he's hard to figure out. I feel like he's pretty. What you see is what you get. I just think oh. that. Yeah, I think people's perceptions of who he is based on who his father is and how he grew up and 
uh, prevent people from seeing him. And that's where he lives. I think he, I think he likes living in people's blind spots because it makes it easier to get around and do what he wants. This is all about kind of the things that parents pass on to us. So let me just kind of go around the room. I'll start with Elena. What's the thing that your dad, your mom passed on to you? What's the best <laughs> example of their well, legacy in you? I come from a very proud Greek, French and Egyptian family. So this is like a Greek salad of like loud, really, that's like our only standard of volume. People think we're shouting at each other, but they did instill in me, I love my family, a, 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 a strong embrace, embracement if that's a word, pride in my roots and to be, be a proud Greek, French and Egyptian girl like, and, and, and to, to champion that. And um, yeah, through art and through everything. That's a big well, you, part of growing up with them. You definitely gesticulate more than anybody here. Uh, Andrew, quickly, <laughs> how about you? Uh, be kind, be kind. <laughs> <laughs> That's what they instilled, yes. And Ian? Listen, always listen. Mm. There's more in the details. And we'll leave it on that note. Hey, congratulations. I hope I get to meet you guys in person. Stay safe during this crazy Absolutely. time. Hey, you Thank, too. You Thank you so much. So are, are you guys dying today or having a good time so far? <laughs> We're having a beautiful time. <laughs> well, congratulations on this. I was talking to your castmates, uh, Tanika. It's funny because the first question I asked them is, um, without saying your own costume, whose were you a little envious of? And yours, Tanika, was the one that people were most <laughs> envious of. Uh, the first time you put it on, what was that like? I felt like a superhuman. Like, <laughs> it was like... The costume designers are so fantastic on this show and they literally created just between the light colors and, and the, the, the scheme that they did and, and the paneling and everything like that. It literally had so much, but it's, it's what to expect in the future. So I think yeah. that you know, we have our classic superhero costumes that have the capes and the things, but Petra Small's costume is kind of moving into what it's going to be like in the future for the next generation. Let's get rid of the capes and stuff. Let's you know, make it so that she's able to physically do things like run fast and throw punches and, and do all of that sort of stuff in this wonderful spandex outfit that was really <laughs> And it's amazing. It feels great sort of thing. But, you know, I just want us to pay respects to the team and really just say thank you so much for giving me an amazing costume. They really did a good job with everybody. You know, Mike, this is about legacy and, and, and what, what is passed on to generations. What of your parents is in you? What legacy did they pass on to you? Just, I, I would say attitude. Attitude. Everything starts with your attitude. Be grateful. Recognize what you have. Uh, you know, the previous generations did what they did to supply me with what they did. And so it's my obligation to do the same. And then the next generation, they run faster and farther, you know. Yeah. So yeah, attitude would be the biggest thing. When they get a cast like this, what is that like for the two of you when you're meeting all these new faces that you're now interacting with as, as, as a collective? It's exciting, you yes. know, having so many people from different backgrounds come together. I mean, the first day that I met Mike, I just knew right away we had a connection with each other. It's just, you know, and I think it was like that with most of our cast, everybody just kind of gelled really well with each other. So, you know, just yeah. being able to have a team of people that you get to work with and do these physically amazing things with, I think, you know, it's, it's one of those blessings that only come around a couple times in life. So, you know, it's that same thing that Mike said, you know, we're just staying grateful and really humble and thankful for the opportunity to be able to do it. Well, and that chemistry yeah. between the two of you definitely translates on screen as well. Uh, quickly, Mike, I know that uh, Josh's son, when he first saw him, called him kind of a crossover between Santa Claus and Moses, <laughs> Josh said. <laughs> what did you first think when you saw Josh Dumel in that suit with the hair and the whole thing? Uh I, I don't know if I got a chance to to actually think anything before I heard. I think I heard someone say "sexy Santa." That was <laughs> oh, okay. Yeah, so that's what it was. Before I could even think, like, well, what does he remind me of? And I heard, oh, okay, there, that must be it. That must be it. Yeah. Listen, if Santa looks like him, I'm waiting every Christmas Eve with cookies right. and milk hanging out by the <laughs> chimney. <laughs> hey, congratulations! I hope to meet you guys in person one of these days, and I hope you're staying safe. Yeah, uh, you too. Thank you so much. And our mutual friend Matthew Hoffman wanted me to say hi. And How he, is that scandal? You know what? He's doing fine. He's just he's doing scandal. great. He's doing that, amazing. that Love Island, just oh. living his best life. Isn't he a sweetheart? He's the best. And it's really nice to meet you.
Nice to meet you too. Um, I have to ask, we've been talking about the outfits all morning long. I don't want to get too personal, but I feel like Lady Liberty has the kind of outfit that your actual boyfriend would say, hey, do you mind wearing that around the house? Just maybe a little bit. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. You just, I was doing this and I was, and Sam, my partner walked through and somebody <laughs> was like, oh wait, can we ask him? And he goes, it's hot. <laughs> yes. Yeah. It's a, I, I'm partial. I think, I think my super suit is the most beautiful. Um, listen, it's, it's a very, um, it is, it was confining. built, it's confining, but it's also our costume designer built it for you to succeed. So she is accentuating everything that's great on your body and covering up maybe the things that aren't your favorites. <laughs> so, you know, you kind of can't put that on and lose. So it's, um, she was wonderful and I, you know, as confining as it is, as hard as it was to get off to go to the bathroom, but I mastered it after six months, I was in and out very fast. Uh, but I did have to go to the bathroom with somebody, with my dresser. We were always like this. We were like, <laughs> let's just keep it eye contact, eye contact. Right. <laughs> but um, I, yeah, I mean, you walk differently. You feel, yeah. it's a very empowering outfit. I have to say, as, as corny as that sounds, I you feel like a badass. I, I feel like you just created the new tagline for Spanx, built so that you can succeed. Because I feel like, <laughs> <laughs> I feel like you just- I'm trademarking that. I'm trademarking yeah. that. If anybody takes it, we keep this. We'll split okay. the dividends. What is your code? What's the code you live by? This is all about a code and, and Josh's character is real serious about it. What is your code? He's very serious about it. To the detriment of like, you know, I think that's interesting is like, because you're seeing them, you see this person who's sort of, I feel like it's always like she's sort of doing what's best for the group and she's like this glue that's keeping this family together and it's so cool because you see her realize that like in remembering who she was that she somehow has stifled her own voice which i think is so important to never lose uh for anybody but as a woman i feel like it's very important so um i I love that Lady Liberty is compassionate. She's a good listener. She's, I think her moral compass is, is something I wish I had a little bit of, you know? I think she's fair, but I think she also realizes that with great power comes great responsibility and that the world is gray. And that this idea that it was black and white sort of was working and it's not working. So I appreciate how, you're starting to see this woman that she was and that you have to be moving this it's you can't you have to be water if you're a wall it's you're going to break in two and so yeah. i like the fact that she is um fluid in how she's living her life well, I can't congratulate you enough. I hope I get to meet you in person. I've heard so much about you obviously through Matthew, but uh congratulations on everything and stay safe. Thank you. I'm in Australia. I feel like I'm super safe, but yes. I'm jealous. I'm sorry. <laughs> I'm sorry. I'm sorry. But do you guys be safe? Thank you. Well, you too. Take care. Okay. Bye. Bye. -bye. Bye. And cut, Bye. please.